don't know if we watch the same thing based on that reaction. What? <laughs> I just feel like... T- hang on. Tim. <laughs> this Tim guy. Who is this Tim guy? Yeah, yeah. Tell me. Talk, tell me what you're just saying. Wait, wait, I don't want you to tell me like that. Tell me for real, not the... Uh, yeah, all or I want to tell you for real that this guy's just trolling us because he just sent the best video ever. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Avi Vanna here, Cinesummer founder, and welcome to another episode of Next Level Filmmaker, the show where you send in your work to us. We take a look and tell you what you can do to take it to that next level. Brought to you, of course, by Cinesummit.com. Make sure to head on over there, sign up for the, our next free event, and featuring the one and only Adam Patch, highly sought after, world renowned commercial director. Let's check out a little bit of his work and jump straight in. Dog, I was having nervous breakdowns like, man, these niggas that much better than me, babe, all, but I still feel possessed as a gunshot, so I represent the first, now let me in my verse right where the horns are like, oh. What's up, Adam? We got a good one today. Uh, I hope you're ready. You ready, my man? I'm ready. Lay it on me. Okay. We got this dude named Tim. Okay. Uh, he sent something. I took a quick peek. Let's watch it. Okay. It looks like a pretty high-end commercial. Okay, sweet. Uh, let's check it out, and then we'll and we'll discuss. Okay, great. These moments, the minutia and the detail fleeting and light in a second, draw a heavy weight in the long hours of night. Intricacies lacquered in gloss, seductive like thick, sweet honey, poison for the unwary. Touch floods the mind with memories. Such beauty in these moments. Like hardened resin, it eventually wears and cracks and splinters and fades. But the details, they remain. They never leave. The defining silence of what was screams in the mist of everything that could have been. offered shelter in a home that wasn't yours. I was your escape, your convenience. You were my hope. They say you can spend a whole lifetime chasing stories to tell only when you're old. Maybe that's the point. Like a familiar stranger we meet in years to come, our memories remind us to pay attention to the minutia and detail in these fleeting moments. So good. Okay. Okay. A- Adam, what? Okay. Well, listen, we're going to get into this in a second. I don't know what the hell we just watched. It I don't know obviously... what we're going to get into because, I mean, there's nothing to crit- Like, this is supposed to be a critique thing, right? We're supposed to give critiques. There's nothing to crit- critique. This is like, this thing is amazing. Okay. Well, well, yeah. We're, we're here to help people, but this dude, it looks like like he sent something that's uh, pretty, pretty rock star stuff. Yeah. 
So what the hell are we here to help with that? But okay. uh, let, let me read what he, he sent in some comments. Let's read it. Okay. Um, I'm, this is, I'm going to be really interested to see where this goes. Okay, yeah. so he says this was originally a personal project which found some limit, extremely limited funding uh, by LG. Uh, the purpose of the film was then adapted from a pur purely creative venture to something for them to use for their launch. Uh, they asked them to explore the handling of blacks, color rendition, dynamic range and movement, and to ensure there were no elements of nudity or drugs, okay? Uh, everything else was left up to me. I personally funded half this project, which I absolutely love. I think people need to pay attention to that. Uh, and worked with a very small crew over two days, which blows my mind. How the hell did he pull this off over two days uh, with a small crew? Aside from directing the film, I wrote the script and produced the entire production and edited the original narrative before he sent it off to a, uh, a, an actual director who completed it. And he obviously had a very good cinematographer. It won Gold Award Cinematography at the Australian Cinematography Society Award. Okay, so that's the background. Um, I guess we could go into in a second what... I yeah. mean, yeah, I don't know. Well, that, Tim, yeah, I'm literally, yeah, I literally just like fall. I just little tabbed over and followed you on Vimeo real quick. Uh, yeah, I don't, I mean, amazing. I don't know. I mean, honestly, I don't know what to say. It's great. It's so cool to hear also that it started out as just like a personal project, which you got people to put some money into. It's rad that you put your own money into it. Um, let's read the next section and see what questions, if he has some, something yeah. specific, because so, I honestly, so, I don't know what so, to tell him. Yeah. Okay, so I asked him if he's got anything that he wants us to, to help him with and et cetera. And he says, as a commercial director, I often find myself pitching or working on projects which I don't necessarily have cre uh, which don't necessarily have the creative that I am truly into or that I gen or that I generally resonate with. While they may pay well, I often get through to the end of the project and think this doesn't speak to what I really want to be doing or what I am really capable of, and so it doesn't make its way onto my reel. Do you have any advice for how I can steer my directing work? And thus my career towards the kind of work I do, uh, towards the kind of work I do, which will resonate, with, which will resonate with me, and that I want to be doing. It's all about saying no. Is it all about saying no to those jobs and risking not working, or is it more about building relationships with agencies who do the kind of work that I want to be doing, or is it doing personal projects, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera, all kinds of options. I, first of all, I just want to say this is a level of scenario that the average person is not in, which yeah. Adam, you're in often, which I love, which I love, which yeah. can maybe give a lot of people insights that are not there yeah. on what's to come for them, etc. cetera. Um, one more thing I want to read real quick, Adam, is the, uh, uh, I asked him also what are the, some of the things that he wants to gain from this critique. So he says, okay. I'm aware of the many flaws of this film. That's funny. So many. <laughs> right? But also of the many obstacles that I encountered to produce it. What I would love to get is an open and honest insight from an industry heavyweight, that's you, Adam, uh, and who has never seen this before, and, and hear his thoughts on what I should definitely have done, uh, not have done, and, of what, and to hear what I did right and any advice on how um, you would have uh, improved on it, Adam. Also, it would be fantastic to get any idea of what I should do with this film if I want to attract similar work with bigger budgets or just more work that I want to be doing. So interesting stuff here. Yeah. Um, interesting stuff here. Yeah. Yeah. I so, mean, I, I definitely don't have answers for, for you, Tim. <laughs> I, yeah, in, in fact, in fact, I'd love to talk with you about it when you figure it out. Cause this is, I'm in the same exact dilemma all the time. And this is the thing that I'm where I'm at in my career as well, where, you know, um, I get good high paying work and it's, but it's not always the stuff that's super exciting or really what I want to do. Um, and I, I mean, from my point of view, you're doing exactly right, which is just like put some money into it, ask some favors, make something you really love that is totally hundred percent you and more work's going to come out of it. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how else, like I'm assuming that this piece is an example of the type of thing that you want to do. And this is like where you want, you're trying to get more of your work to go this way. So I don't know. I, I can't think of a better way to get more work like this than to produce like an amazing, you know, little short film like this. Um, the fact that you, uh, you know, got LG to put a little money into it is like, I feel like you hack the system, you know, it's brilliant. Um, this is the exact same type of thing that I'm, you know, trying to do it or, or want to do. So, um, yeah, I, well, you know, when he asked the question and I saw the work, I was thinking to myself, I bet Adam is in this boat also. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. You know, I see your work and I'm sure 
you're not in love with every one of these projects, right? You just yeah. that's the project that, that was given to you, yeah. and you did something fantastic with it. But it's not like rock star, uh, uh, you know, messaging or something like that that you're so in love with. I mean, yeah. you're talking about some product that that you might even be, you know, bored with, right? So, totally. uh, but it pays the bills. Yep. So I, I'm guessing your your job is to always kind of do your best to push the envelope so that you can at least do something exciting and, and, and yeah, grow. Yeah, but I think that's, I mean, that's one thing. Yes, that's true. And, and that gets you through the day to day. That's the thing that gets you through each job, you know, and that's like, so pushing the envelope, like from job to job, that's a way that I get through it. And like, that's, you know, makes it more interesting for me. And like, even if it's a job that I'm not super into, I try to find a way to push the envelope or do something that's personally, you know, even if it's a small thing, like I want to try this new camera technique, even though I don't care about the, the you know, the, the rest of the thing that I'm doing or whatever. Um, uh, but I, I think doing a project like this is the, like, that's, so pushing the envelope from job to job is the thing that gets you from job to job, but really stepping out and doing something that's a hundred percent your vision and your voice like this is, that's the way to get the work that you want. I think there's no way to just like slight, slightly sneak your voice into every little project. Um, I think doing, doing it like this, um, Tim's. Tim's work, well, actually, I haven't looked at the rest of his work. This video reminds me so much of um, one of my other favorite directors who's named Gustav Johansson, and he did, he's done so much great work. I just lo love all this stuff, and um, he, he did this short film many years ago. Actually, I think it was funded by LG also. It was like a short film that he got a little bit of money from a brand to do, and it's basically just short film with a logo, with a brand logo at the end, and... Uh, from what I could tell, that kind of jump started his career. He set, it set hit the tone, you know, of the type of stuff he wants to do, and he got a ton of like bigger jobs based on that film. So I don't know really where. So let's 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 answer this one question. Yeah. What would you suggest for him? I, I really do want to go through it a little bit, okay. and maybe not critique, but compliment, right? Yeah, to what you thought was like was was, was exceptional. He he obviously obviously wants to get your your feedback from somebody who hasn't seen it and just you know. Yeah. Just watching it and, and what worked and what didn't, et cetera. But, uh, but before we go into that, one, one thing that I think he asked specifically, which you might be able to, to help him with, is, is how could he use this to jumpstart you know, more, more work? I, well, I, um, think, it, I think the film itself is going to jumpstart more work. I think if just it being on your reel and getting, on, getting more eyes on it is going to help. I don't know. I mean, like anything in the commercial world, I assume you probably have a rep and your reps are out trying to find you work. And like now that you have this piece, this piece should be be able to help them find other work that's similar to this and you should be able to this hopefully has opened a new window for you to get your hands on other jobs that are you know in this vein so i think uh in theory you shouldn't have to do much like this film just having this film in your role you know it, on your reel is going to help get more work like this so that's i've seen that you know time and time again with directors they'll do some personal project that's super cool it gets a vimeo staff pick it gets some buzz people see it it goes on the reel and you know now that's part of your do you, portfolio do you do any steps do you do any steps adam to get it into the hands of specific people uh or you have your rep and then you go to yeah, sleep and that's i that. mean kind of but i mean you know like if i have a project i'm really pr pumped on like my reps will do like a blast out specifically about the project to to agencies or to like their contacts and not just waiting for stuff to come in like that but be like hey we're really excited to share this new project that tim did and like they would you know send out links to them so if your rep tim if your reps haven't done that already i would totally hound them to do that um and yeah i think yeah I'm not sure who the proper people are that you need to get in front of. Or you need the eyeballs to have seen this, but um, you know, with my with with everything that I do with CineStub and whatnot, I'm so deep into the into uh, um, uh, promoting via online and all that. And I think, and this this might apply to this applies to everybody really, but you do need to have a presence. You should have a presence online. You should have a, a, a presence online. And it's, and, and you might think to yourself, oh, I'm not that guy. I don't like to post everything in social media and whatnot. But, you know, as a tactic, it's, it's a very smart thing to do. You can, you cannot imagine the reach that it can, uh, uh, it can create for you. Now I would be very smart about it. Like for example, on, on Instagram, I would find out who are the people that I want to be in front of and start, getting in that world and getting in that circle and following them and commenting and all this kind of stuff so that you're in their 
you know, in their circle of stuff. And then as you're as you're in their circle, they're going to start to be in your circle and you're going to start to post stuff. And they're going to say, wow, look at that. And it could be everyday stuff. It could be shots of you on set. And then every once in a while, every like 30, 30th post by you, it'll be a video like this. Mm -hmm. And then their eyes will pop out. Yeah. But if you just, you know, and then you can be just building those relationships and whatnot. The, the, my point is that you're the today with the way the world is, is built and, 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 and that the connectivity is you can be connected quite strongly on your own yeah totally that's that's the point 100 percent. yeah 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 that's a good point yeah um so adam let's go through it just a little bit you know like you said it's <laughs> it's it's incredible uh what do you love about it what why is it working maybe tell somebody like myself you want this well this is what you got to do i mean every, <laughs> i mean i don't yeah it's just like every it feels like everything is just i mean i just love the style of it i love it feels like everything is just you know Work, the performance Let's is take a, that shot right there. Let's take that this? shot that you were on right there, where, where they were on, uh, they were in, um, like in, in a laundry mat kind oh, of yeah. room. That look, the wider shot with her sitting on the, on the, on the, yeah, I don't, yeah, here, on yep. the thing by herself. Yeah, right there. That looks like an average regular shot, but yet it, I mean, the, the location. Let me rephrase. The location looks like an average everyday place, but yet it, it's working. Obviously, there's something going on here, cinematography with the lighting. There's some blue coming from somewhere. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, they took he took an average place and 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 got made it look really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's yes, exactly. That's that's why it works. That's what all these are. I mean, that's it sounds like this is like a you know favorite type of job. You're asking a small crew to come out and help. Uh, you know, this is uh, you're, that's exactly right. He's just coming into a place like this, making it look as as good as he can. And and the thing that's cool to me about this that's interesting is the style that he has throughout of it. It's just like so colorful, like super, con I mean, again, and I love the fact that now knowing that this is, you know, coming from LG, their, their brief is to make it colorful and show a lot of black. Like that's a cool brief. To ha that's what an amazing brief to have going into a, a commercial. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how else to elaborate. I mean, this is just like a basic laundromat, but you just shoot it in the right way with, you know, beautiful lenses, great performances. These, these two people are just, you know, their performances are great. I love their chemistry throughout the thing. They're, you know, they have such good looks. They're the styling of, you know, how their, you know, their wardrobe, their, their just looks are amazing. I have an idea. Adam. I think we need to get Tim on for a, <clears throat> a three-way with us and, and, yeah. and let's talk about it. Yeah. I mean, what, just... he, what, you know, maybe, maybe with his DP too, because I remember I did a project not too long ago, which I was freaked out about where I was trying to push the envelope and I really wanted to finally get something that's hot. Right. Mm -hmm. And you were telling me, get the most incredible DP you can get your hands on and you're off to the races. Mm -hmm. It seems like obviously he's brilliant here, what he's done and directing and whatnot, but a huge key here. And, and, and as he mentioned, he won the cinematography award is he got himself a really rock star cinematographer he did but i mean you can tell that this isn't just like a guy who just hired a really good dp like this is direction at its finest you know he's um tell, you know. tell me tell me tell me tell well me i mean you... okay well one he has the vision for this obviously you know he wrote it and directed it you get a dp in here this is some weird shit that he's shooting you know what i mean like you got to have like you have to have the vision going into this of what you're shooting here and like um it's not a, there's not a script. It's not like you read you, this poem or whatever is being script, you know, spoken over this thing. It's not like you just send that to the DP and it's like, cool, this is what we're going to shoot. You know, this is like all in his head, these types of scenes and the emotion you're trying to get and, you know, all these things. So, you know, it's not, it's not so, it's not like a by the book thing where you, I'm sure it was a huge collaboration with the DP, but it's not like, Hey, look, here's the boards. Like let's elevate this by just getting a really great DP and shooting it. Um, it's really like a matter of, uh, it's like a true collaboration of uh, great directing um, with, uh, you know, somebody, somebody who's obviously a uh, seasoned cinematographer. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm trying to pull out of you things that for a beginner like myself, yeah, what's the great directing here? Because obviously it is. I just don't know how to explain it. And you do. I mean, the performance, the performance of the actors is the thing that makes it work, right? I mean, it's like what is this? This is just a shot of her looking out the window, but there's emotion in those, in those, you know, 45 wow. frames that we just saw her. Right. I mean, you feel, yeah. I don't know what you feel, but you feel she's a real person you don't feel that this is an actress who's like doing a short film with this guy on the weekend. Right. Like this feels like a real person. He's setting up these real scenes, you know, the, um, yeah. the chemistry between these two people, you feel like they're real, real people, you know? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're catching them in the middle of a real Yeah, story. every scene is like you're just capturing these really awesome moments. Um, wow, but again, so he's, it's he's, so crazy yeah. because none of that is like that's all coming from his head or coming from this idea of whatever this story is um, in a very abstract way. But it's like it's not like, OK, cool. We're just going to like right, we got, uh, you know, we're, we're we got the Mustang and we're going to go at the parking lot. Like, what are we going to shoot here? You know, it's like. It's not like yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, like, so see, you, yeah. you, if I, I'm watching this and anybody else is watching this and saying, "Wow, I'd like to try to make something like that," I would not have realized that that's where a huge emphasis needs to be on on these characters and what they're going through. And there's a, there's a, there's a whole movie going on here that he's managed to uh, build within them and and communicate to them, and this backstory probably that he's that he's telling them so that they can kind of get it. right. Is that right? I mean, maybe I, this is such an abstract, like it's not a, it's obviously not a linear story and I don't know what his approach was to it. I mean, it could have been, it doesn't have to be like, Hey, here's your backstory and this is the exact emotion we're going for or whatever. But like, okay. it's his job to set the mood and get the tone of like, whatever this thing is in here. And like, you know, this scene, okay, so we'll do like, like literally just think about the setting up this, this scene. I'm just going to use this scene for example, cause this is where sure, I happen sure. to be on. Okay. So we're sitting in the front. Okay. So she's sitting in the front of the car Yeah, that's she's she's good. <laughs> okay, so she's sitting in the front of the car. What, what he's gonna so he's gonna set this scene up. It's not like that shot just happened accidentally, right? So it's like okay, so the shot is we'll put her in the front of the car. I'm gonna sh we'll shoot from the back seat, shoot her, and we just want to get some. So setting it up like from a visual standpoint, we'll get a bunch of you know beautiful lights going in the background. And what and then what is her performance now? You know he'll be like okay. Now I want you to look over at him and, you know, like just getting like, again, there's nothing in the, there's no script for that sort of thing. So like just coming up with these creative scenarios that you, these moments that you want to capture, that's what he's, you know, doing, which isn't, there's, those aren't things that exist on a page before, you know what I mean? Right. It's one right, thing if right. you're like trying to, you know, there's a script that you're trying to follow and you're trying to tell a specific story, but it's when it's so abstract, like this, it's really interesting. To, this is something that speaks to me is really interesting is like getting those natural performances out of something that there's no a reason for necessarily yeah yeah like this he's he's just walking what is he doing <laughs> like it's, yeah but he has to right. like what is he doing it's weird you know we could dissect it like what what's in this window here what is he looking at um <laughs> yeah the, just the the motion of him sitting there and looking up that's not a thing that happens on accident he's got to build some sort of scenario or give some sort of direction to these people to get that type of thing you know what i mean right 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 okay shit a lot going on there um okay that's next level stuff there tim um i yeah. think we're gonna have to get him on huh adam yeah i mean just have him you should just have him do uh one of the one of your cities <laughs> All right. Our next presenter is going to be Tim Kindler. Tim, yeah, that it. was rock and roll. I, I hope we answered, I mean, gave him some of the information that he wanted to yeah. <laughs> to, to get out of it. Um, I think I think that we should, yeah. I mean, Tim, when you figure it out, you call me and tell me because I want to know. Yeah. Great work. We did our best. Great work. Um, and, and, but, I, but I think it's also maybe it's good for him to hear that that's, that's what everybody goes through. I mean, that's the, that's the yeah. name of the game, right? It's exactly. The, that's just the process. Um, and it's probably just a matter of just keep going, right? Until it, until you get through it. Yeah. Until keep, do, you... keep doing stuff like this, where it's like the stuff that you want to do, and eventually more yeah. stuff like that's yeah. going to come to you. Okay, awesome. Little little different one today because Tim gave us something that was so freaking high level that we just had to sit there and be in awe of it. Um, so, <laughs> <That's good. All laughs> right. yeah, that's awesome. Hopefully, we'll get the uh, more of that. Why not? Yeah, sure. Adam, thank you, my brother. We'll move thank on you, to man. the next one. Okay. Tim, rock and roll. So I hope you like that. Make sure to check out every single episode. Subscribe. Hit the bell button so you don't miss any one of them. And I'll see you on the next episode. Make sure to be signed up for CineSummit.com. I'll see you on those events as well. Take it easy.